I grew up as a Seventh-day Adventist. My father was a Seventh-day Adventist pastor. And growing up, however, we learn about Jesus. We need to love him and serve our father. But I didn't have a good or real introduction to the Holy Spirit. I don't know how to relate with the Holy Spirit. It seems like Holy Spirit is always just like the third leg that we seldom talk to, we seldom recognize, I should say I, I seldom recognize and part of my life. Today, Our objective would be to be enthused, to be encouraged to know more about the third person of our triune God. That's number one. Number two, after this presentation, we should be encouraged to develop or pursue a more meaningful relationship with the Holy Spirit. And number three objective would be to be encouraged knowing that the Holy Spirit is yearning, is waiting to empower us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, We are here today to study your word. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge your presence. Guide us into all truth. We ask for wisdom and understanding. Use me in Jesus' name. Amen. Our need of the Holy Spirit. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witness, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Why do we need the Holy Spirit? The Bible tells us that Holy Spirit affirms that we are God's children. Nobody else and the triune God does that. To remove, to move us, to follow, keep, and do His will. It is the working of the Holy Spirit to do this. The reason why we are here today is because of that moving of that Holy Spirit that convicted you and me to be here today. The character of God will flow from us like rivers of living water through this Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to empower us to speak, to speak the Word, to be a witness with boldness and gives us power in our prayers. Now, Ellen White says, knowing all this about the Holy Spirit, since this is the means by which we are to receive power, why do we not hunger and thirst for the gift of the Spirit? Why do we not talk of it, pray for it, and preach concerning it? The Lord is more willing to give the Holy Spirit to those who serve Him than parents are to give good gifts to their children. For the daily baptism of the Spirit, every worker, all of us here, should offer this petition to God. You know, when the Holy Spirit comes into our lives, He serves as a witness to us first. He says, 
And when he comes, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. It says here that it is the work of the Holy Spirit to convict us of our sins and lead us to Jesus. He is witnessing in us. The Spirit himself bears witness and we know we are sons and daughters of God. It is he who would tell us that we are gods. The Holy Spirit worked in our lives in three phases. This is in John 16, 8 to 11. First, we have been talking about this. He convicts us of our sin. He brings us to repentance and therefore lead us to Jesus. Second, he tells us about the righteousness of Christ, telling us that it's sufficiency to save us. Third, he expels Satan and sin in our lives. Before knowing all this, I thought it was the work of Jesus. I thought it was the work of the God the Father to do all this. It is in fact, the Bible says, through the working of the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5, 16 says, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. And therefore, by doing that, there will be victory through the Holy Spirit. After we get baptized, seems like life as a Christian even before becomes more difficult. We see more temptations, difficulties, challenges in our lives. Maybe because we fail to tap into that power of the Holy Spirit who gives us a victory and live a good and meaningful Christian life. Through the presence of the Holy Spirit moving our lives, we confess our sins to God. It is through Him that we accept the righteousness of Jesus in our behalf. And we are enabled to resist the temptations of the devil. So we are assured of victory through the Holy Spirit, what would you say? When was the last time you talk, you can have conversation with the Holy Spirit? Just the Holy Spirit. Before all this, I haven't realized the importance of talking to the Spirit, to the Holy Spirit, just by himself, just like talking to Jesus, just like talking to God the Father. They are all God. We have to recognize all this. However, in our prayers, we seldom say, Our Father, dear Jesus, and we kind of neglect the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit actually empowers that prayer so that it will be acceptable in the sight of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, from John, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Did you know that even Jesus, after his baptism, he actually prayed for the Holy Spirit to baptize him. And that empowers him from that moment to face that 40 day fast. The temptation, the greatest temptation, he's been through. Is it impossible to be baptized? And yet without the Holy Spirit, 
happen? Is it possible to be baptized and yet not having the Holy Spirit in you? Is it possible? Correct. Because that should be the process. Even Jesus did that process. It was not automatic. Do you know, open your Bibles to Acts 14. Uh, Acts 8. 14 and 17. Could someone read that, please? And when the apostles who from Jerusalem heard that the Lord had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. Then therefore had them brought to the chief of the synagogue. Is that Acts 14 to 17? Brethren, these are people who were, who were baptized by the preaching of Philip. They received Jesus. They got baptized. But when, they, when Peter came and asked them, do you have the Holy Spirit? Some of them even say, we don't know the Holy Spirit. They were baptized and yet not have the power of the Holy Spirit. And when Peter prayed for them, they received the Holy Spirit. Amen. Question to ourselves. Did we ask for the Holy Spirit to come to our lives? If not, it is wise to ask for it. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is given to those who seek Him through prayer. That is biblical. Again, I'll tell you a confession. I thought that when I was baptized, when I get out of that water, I will be endowed with Holy Spirit. It was not so. I have to ask for it. It took a long time, brethren, before I realized that. Those who are willing to obey, the Holy Spirit will be given. Again, he says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. It will come to you only when you ask for it. Or let your heart be open for the indwelling of that Holy Spirit. The early church received power as they prayed for God's Spirit to come upon them. As you can see, it's not passive. It's not automatic. This is something just like accepting Christ. You we have to choose for the Holy Spirit to dwell in us. I said, we could be walking in this place filled with the Holy Ghost. And yet, that Holy Spirit is not indwelling in our hearts. Do you believe? If you could picture this, I would have a bucket of water. I'll get a ping pong ball. Do you know ping pong ball? I would hold that ping pong ball and put it down to the bottom of that bucket. And when I let it go, what would happen? It will pop it up. The water could be the Holy Spirit. You and me could be that ping pong ball. No matter how we immerse ourselves into that Holy Spirit filled place like this church, we will not be baptized until we crack that ball open and let it be filled with that Holy Spirit. Then that ball would stay at the bottom of the bucket and be filled with water. 
Have you asked the Holy Spirit to dwell in your hearts lately, brothers and sisters? If not, I would say this again. Ask for this to happen in your lives personally. Once the Spirit enters into our lives, it will bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. What are these fruits? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Almost everything here in the United States have laws, policies, and procedures guiding on how to do these things. However, the Bible says, all this goodness that we have seen, there is no law against this. Amazing. The works of flesh are eliminated by the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Have you been struggling with sin lately? Or challenges by temptation? If that is true in your lives, ask for the Holy Spirit. And let those fruits grow. And then all of these challenges will be gone. It gives us a victory. We will experience inexpressible joy. If you have the fruits of the Spirit, it humbles me. As I said, I live in a home of a Seventh day Adventist pastor. I haven't experienced inexpressible joy. What that does mean? It brings me closer to the third person of our triune God. I pray, Holy Spirit, come. I want your fruits to be seen in me. I want to have inexpressible joy because this or the manifestation if you have the Holy Spirit in your lives. If nobody would see that, let us reassess ourselves. The peace of God will guard our hearts and minds. That is part of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we are transformed into the image of Jesus. Do you believe that? Ellen White knows what she said. The first quote we read this morning, she said, I paraphrase, there's not enough sermon being preached regarding the Holy Spirit. Do you know that only through the Holy Spirit that we will be transformed into the image of Jesus? Then why aren't we praying more for that person, God, to inspire us and dwell in our hearts? During the 10 days of prayer, this topic comes up. The presenter asked us, what do you think are your gifts given by the Holy Spirit? He gave us a piece of paper, a board to write on. He gave us three minutes to do this. It took me five minutes to write one. That's just me. Because it led me to a deeper thinking. 
that every time I try to write something, I hesitate. Is it really from the Holy Spirit? I ask. And therefore I stop and erase it. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. Is this the same as talent? What do you think? Are the gifts of the Spirit, of the Holy Spirit, the same as talent? Singing, writing. It's totally different. There are a lot of good preachers out there. They are on TV. They are so good that they make millions. Is that a gift of the Holy Spirit? What makes it a gift of the Holy Spirit? There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does the work in all of us. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. There is something given to you without you knowing it. Did someone here say, I am sure I have identified the gift of the Holy Spirit in me today? Did someone, I would not say, if there be no one, I won't judge you. I didn't hear that. The Holy Spirit wants to give many gifts to his people. The Bible says you would only know if it is the gift of the Holy Spirit. If that gift would help edify the church, if that talent, if your skill does not help edify or strengthen the church, guess what? It's not from the Holy Spirit. It could just be your skill. Thank God for giving you that. There's another thing. You may think, I have nothing that I would say a gift of the Holy Spirit. It was actually said, desire is spiritual gifts and pray that you may receive them. That presenter again asks us the question, what kind of spiritual gift do you want to receive? Again, I pause. One of my friends, I know you know Brother Mike, Uh, Carter, he said, I want the gift to be able to raise people from dead, to resurrect. I said, wow. Well, do not uh, belittle the capacity because of the Holy Spirit. The disciples did it, right? They were blessed and they did it. And therefore, he is within the realms of that expectation that I want, Lord, I want that gift. Holy Spirit, I want that gift. Okay? Good. Now, to all of you, ask for a gift right now. You know where to ask to. Not from Jesus. Not from God. Talk to the Holy Spirit. So it's really difficult for me, the transition between talking to the Holy Spirit, talking to Jesus, talking to God the Father, as our God. It's kind of... Very challenging. It's awkward. I have to stop sometime when I pray. Who, to whom should I address this? So I am more cognizant when you pray. It's not just something that would come out from you because you did it over and over and over. You have to consciously think and talk and visualize who are you talking to. But eventually, we will all go to God. 
for me. I want the gift of healing. I want to be able to pray and come to a brother and say, you'll be healed, just like the disciples did. And God has a plan for you too. So, on my quest of knowing my spiritual gifts, do you, who could tell you your spiritual gifts? Are your elders come and tell you this is your spiritual gift? That's your spiritual gift? No. For me, I have the same challenge. I don't know what my spiritual gifts are. So I went to a website. I searched on it. It's a gifts that church growth that all. There are many actually. I didn't know about this until I searched myself. So I went there, and you have a test to take. This is just a sample. Spiritual gifts. So you take 100 questions. Some have just 10 questions. And the more questions they have, the better the result. Because they would know exactly. Yes. So this will give you this result after answering 100 questions. So just like this example, uh, among that, the top three gifts of this person would be administration, shepherding, and showing mercy. Isn't that amazing? If some you know, you kind of know what spiritual gifts you have and then build on it. And if this person would, let's say, evangelism is the lowest or teaching is the lowest, then maybe he could pray to, for the Holy Spirit to improve that if he wants that improved. It's just good knowing. One more thing is this. In the church, we should be affirming each other's spiritual gift. For example, uh, a boy would come and sing. Don't just say, good job. Good job. Thank you. But if you believe, you think deeper. If you believe that this boy would actually, that's actually something. Because when he was singing, you were moved. You were not impressed, but moved. You were directed heavenward. And therefore, you know that that's a gift given by the Holy Spirit. You need to affirm that gift. It's not just saying, good job. It's maybe... Talking to a parent saying, you know what, I was moved by that rendition today. I believe that your boy had the gift of singing. And therefore, that parent would then be cognizant in training the child to develop the gift and lead them to this. Not for glorification. They start singing, oh, I feel good because I, I sing good. and It's here. That boy then will be led heavenwards. So affirming each other's gifts would help edify the church. Praying in the Holy Spirit. Praying always with all prayer and supplication and spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. When you pray, could you just assess? Again, I have disclosed so many of these things prior to this point. When you pray, how do you do that? Do you visualize who you're talking to? Or you just pray just because? Can someone share how they pray? How, how is that prayer, praying moment happen? Do you just speak the words? For me, when I pray, even prior to just recognizing the role of the Holy Spirit in my prayer, when I pray, I pray like I visualize it, like I'm talking to God the Father. And then I can see Jesus. 
that was empty then because I, I don't know how to relate with the Holy Spirit. So when I speak, when I pray, I pray like God, the Father. I open my heart. That's how I visualize when I pray. So now that the Holy Spirit comes in, my prayer pattern changed. Christ, our mediator, and the Holy Spirit are the constantly interceding in man's behalf. But the Spirit pleads not for us as does Christ who presents his blood shed from the foundation of the world. The Spirit works upon our hearts. There's the role now. The Spirit works upon our hearts, drawing out prayers and penitence, praises, praises and thanksgiving. The gratitude which flows from our lips is the result of the Spirit striking the chords of the soul in holy memories, awakening the music of the heart. It's just beautifully written. So now when I pray, by the way, it is the Holy Spirit who takes our prayer, our words and supplication. That's why he moans and groans with, and we cannot understand it. And brings it to Jesus. Okay? And Jesus then would take that prayer and intercede for our behalf. And God the Father will accept it because it came through Jesus' name. Now, this is the dynamics of prayer. You have to recognize the presence of your, the Holy Spirit. Because it is that Holy Spirit that will convict you of our heart. You don't just go straight to God. That prayer will not be powerful. To tap the trying God makes a prayer incredibly powerful. Once that Holy Spirit, imagine, the Holy Spirit will take your prayer will inspire you to say those words that comes out of your lips. Because that alone, without the Holy Spirit, will go, it's not acceptable. So, when that prayer is raised by the Holy Spirit to Jesus, our intercessor, then that becomes powerful because it's already interpreted. And Jesus will then present that prayer to God the Father. And therefore, who would say no to the Son of God? Even God himself would say, would not do that. And therefore, it is logical that when we pray, we will recognize the presence of the Holy Spirit. Submission to the Holy Spirit. If we fail to submit, we have said, it is the Holy Spirit that convicts us of our sin. Correct? Yeah. If we fail to do that, little by little it's time. Eventually, we'll act. Therefore I say to you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. It is not the Holy Spirit that stops pleading. It is us who stop recognizing its presence. And therefore, the Holy Spirit could no longer work in us. I put warning there. Because truly converted people are capable of turning away from Jesus. Do not resist the guidance and warnings of the Holy Spirit. Give your life to Jesus before it is too late. And the best time to obey the voice of the Holy Spirit it's the first time he speaks to you. The second time around, it's just a little soft. But it's not the Holy Spirit making it softer. 
It is us distancing ourselves. Again, just like our God, all of them gods, they will not insist themselves to us. They need our permission to come into our lives. The work of the Holy Spirit. After all this, I saw an, another angel come down from heaven with great authority, and the earth grew bright with its splendor. Then I heard another voice calling from heaven, Come away from her, my people. Do not take part in her sins, or you will be punished with her. The purpose of the power of the Holy Spirit is not to glorify ourselves. It is to the reaching of the people. All the examples of the empowerment of the Holy Spirit in the Bible leads other people to Christ. So if you ask for the, poly, the power of the working of the Holy Spirit because you want your business to grow, it's wrong. Because you want something else, it's wrong, brothers. When you ask the Holy Spirit, you should accept the fact that when He comes into your life, you will tell the good news of salvation to others. That's the main purpose of the power of the Holy Spirit. The rest are just effects of it. The blessing of good life, happiness, joy, peace of mind. It's just a byproduct of it. The main thing is to bring people to Christ. And they too would be saved. When the Holy Spirit is working, people will be drawn. People will be drawn to the truth, including knowledge of what is to come. The Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin. The Holy Spirit is a helper who teaches and reminds us. The Holy Spirit is a source of revelation, wisdom, and power. The Holy Spirit gives spiritual gifts to believers. These are the works of the Holy Spirit. Now, knowing all this, knowing what we have discussed, let's wrap it up. Do you find the need of the Holy Spirit in your lives? Are you now encouraged to know more about this third person of the Godhead? And are you encouraged knowing that the Holy Spirit is just waiting, waiting for you to let Him in so you will be empowered When all this, if your answer is affirmative, let us then come to a conclusion that we need to abide in Him in a daily basis. Remember the warning that even those good people could trip up and be lost. I have come up with an acronym, Be Saved. Be saved by abiding in the Holy Spirit. Be being able to say, you have to begin the day with Him. Amen. When I say with Him, three of them. Amen. Not just the two. Three of them. E, exercise to strengthen relationship with Him. When you exercise relationship, we know that by reading, but by listening, and by praying, it will strengthen the relationship and our, and our faith in God. Again, when I say God, three of them. S, submit yourself to Him. Especially on that first calling. 
A, act according to his leading. When that Holy Spirit convicts you, when that Holy Spirit enters into our lives, he would lead us into reaching out people. Don't hold yourself now. Don't say you're shy. Find that opportunity. That's the main purpose of that Holy Spirit. Act according to his leading. Visualize. Meditate. Think about him. When I say, when I pray, I look at, I visualize. I meditate on him. E, again, if you start with him, end the day with him. Again, three of them. When all is done, when you did your prayer that night, it's not enough. Make a commitment. Decide to abide in Him. It's not just a prayer. Recommitment. To do this again the following day. Even spirit-filled people sometimes make mistakes. Abraham, Moses, David, Peter, all had defects of character and momentarily failures in the hour of temptation. Even Jesus was tempted, but he never yielded. So just because we are walking in the spirit at this moment does not mean we are beyond possibility of making mistakes. And a mistake is not the same as hardening our sin, but if you live the spirit, work in you. You will be saved. Again, brothers, let's repeat this because this will become a daily habit. B, read it out loud. You see, making things into memory, it's either you teach it, you say it out loud, and you keep repeating it. So, When we speak it, it inculcates deeper into our brain. So say it out loud. Begin the day with him. E, exercise to strengthen relationship with him. Submit to him. Act according to his leading. Visualize him. End the day with him. Decide to abide with him. Again, after all this, knowing an untapped resource of power, when we come out of this place, be encouraged knowing that He, the Holy Spirit, is yearning to empower us. He's just waiting to give us this power we've been waiting for in our lives. You can go forth in faith Believing that the Holy Spirit accompanies you. That's my prayer.